So we're here in, in Tel Aviv uh, at the headquarters of Backfeeds. Uh, Matan, you're uh, one of the founders of, of Backfeeds. Uh, for people who don't, who don't know what it is, uh, what is it? <laughs> okay, thanks a lot. Um, so Backfeed is really, um, it's a, in a way, incarnation of all, all the ideas that we've had in, uh, in a different project, in a previous project, uh, in particular in Lazuz. Um, and they were kind of emerging from the, move, from the blockchain movement, uh, or if you want, decentralization movement. And, and when blockchain appeared uh, originally from the Bitcoin, and later on from a more progressed uh, project like Ethereum, it basically a allowed um, decentralized network, distributed network, to hold consensus and to interoperate and to interact between each other. So like imagine gigantic networks of nodes that make decentralized distributed interaction of something like the Bitcoin. The Bitcoin is a monetary system. But once you want to make more complicated interaction, let's say that you want to dream really far Ahead, you want to dream about, you know, millions of nodes who insure each other, make insurance with with no insurance company in between. You want to dream about billions of people like the Facebook network, but without Facebook. So the technology is there; it enables that. But then, what is the rules of the game? How those people sh cooperate? How those people share the value that, uh, that they create together? Um, how do they govern, self-govern themselves? Just like in a way. You can ask yourself how ants govern themselves when they build these kind of seemingly complex structures, how birds do that, fish and so on. So the same thing for people, for communities, for networks. Um, so Backfit is basically building this infrastructure, the governance protocol for decentralized network, uh, the reputation, uh, decentralized reputation protocol, um, decentral decentralized value distribution protocol, uh, and, and generally decentralized governance or decision making. and and. Well, that's, that's the first layer of that, and then the second layer is more, more kind of a platform kind of thing. So, you know, practically speaking, where, what, what does the platform look like? How do millions of people know about each other and interact spontaneously uh, to self-organize themselves? Okay, and, 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 and uh, what is the benefit of this? Because uh, 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 are there also existing models on the market, or yeah, probably uh, some central models on the market, or is this completely new? It, it, it's in a way, it's a comp okay, so it's in, to, to, to a large extent it's completely new, but uh, you can extrapolate, you can take previous old models and extrapolate to understand it. For example, in a way it's a generalization of the, of the idea of Bitcoin to, to a large extent. Uh, Bitcoin is a, is, a, is a working example of how literally thousands of nodes on the network can interact in a completely decentralized way without any centralized server or even you know, governance uh, entity or authority or monitoring authority and consensually agree about what is the situation, like how, who holds what and so on. Uh, both, so, I mean, it needs to be appreciated that decentralization is, in, there are two layers of decentralization here. There is a technologically uh, decentralized architecture which literally means that thousands of servers are spread all over the world and agree about the information. And that's the breakthrough of blockchain. But there's also a governance protocol, like how all of these thousands of, net of, of nodes on the network agree about how many tokens, how many bitcoins to mine, to issue, to print for each contribution, for each miner. Now, in the bitcoin case, it's very, well, it's not easy, but it's more primitive in the sense that there is a predefined algorithm that is only triggered by, um, I would say, algorithmically quantifiable actions of nodes. Basically, each node in the network, each node in the network runs the software, and the participation, the way you can participate in the network is only via the software. So it's very rigid, and then uh, there is a predefined algorithm that determines how many tokens you will receive for your participation. But if you want to in now imagine more complex, uh, more complex uh, situations, just like, for example, decentralized insurance or decentralized journalism, you know, how millions of people, like in Wikipedia, uh, will cooperate on writing stuff in a, in a completely non-centralized way, then you need the governance protocol for decentralized uh, networks. So that's one way to extrapolate, to, to explain backfit as an extrapolation of Bitcoin or Ethereum. Uh, you, can also, you can also explain backfit as extrapolation of Wikipedia, for example. So Wikipedia is a collaborative effort, but the big differences is that 
Wikipedia is not really decentralized. It's actually, at the end of the day, it's centralized. There is someone to decide what is right, what is wrong. Um, so that's one big difference that Blackfield really allows you to make fully decentralized Wikipedia. Uh, another difference is that in Wikipedia, every, everyone are volunteers. There is no economical incentive to participate. And that's a problem for scalability. Um, and then again, in Blackfield, you have economical incentive model for participation, which is basically similar to Bitcoin. You know, the earlier you are contributing to a network, the more value you share in that network. Uh, and the third difference from Wikipedia is that whereas Wikipedia just for it's you know specific for text editing, Blackfield is for everything. You can deploy it for any you know any application. For example, for open source community uh, writing code or or anything else or transportation or what what, what not. Uh, so that's another way to explain Blackfield extrapolation of Wikipedia. You can also explain Blackfield extrapolation of crowdsource the crowdsource trend, where there is a there is a work that basically a company is basically outsourcing to the crowd. Mm -hmm. the, the only difference then is that there is this company that is uh, deciding how to out outsource the thing and to manage the stuff. And Backfield is the same thing, but without just cutting the head, basically. Um, that's another way to explain it. And like, you can look at it from, di from very different, from dif different point of view. Also, Kickstarter is, is an example because crowdfunding. So Kickstarter or crowdfunding is making the crowd participating in the ownership in a way of the product. And again, Backfield is really trying to diminish the borders between founders, investors, collaborators, early adapters, or users. There's just everyone, and you can just participate in any way you want yeah. and share the value, the ownership, or whatnot. Yeah, but, uh, and, and, and before this, you, was, uh, you were also in, in, in involved in, in Lazus. This is also the place where this idea was born uh, that you felt, okay, but this is so, yeah, uh, so special subjects that I want to go further with this. Right, yeah. So. When we started Lazuz, uh, it was when it was just in the early days of the of the blockchain, the second blockchain revolution, where Ethereum when Ethereum started, and there was a lot of excitement about the, cent the possibility of decentralized applications, and I think Lazuz was one of the earliest decentralized application to be uh, built. Uh, the uniqueness about Lazuz is that uh, whereas everybody else designed decentralized application but built them with companies, in Lazuz we tried to say, okay, let's build a decentralized application in a decentralized way. So decentralized collaboration, if you want decentralized startup. Um, and which was a great idea, but we, we lacked the actual mechanism to do that. We lacked the protocols for decentralized collaboration and we lacked the platform for decentralized collaboration. Um, and then within Lazus, we actually, in parallel, in a way, s s try to develop the ideas for decentralized transportation, ride sharing, and at the same time, decentralized collaboration. And at some point, we just realized that it's just too much of, uh, of, of work for one project. And at some point, I just decided to quit Lazuz in order to concentrate my efforts on the decentralized collaboration um, front that will also uh, serve projects like Lazuz and others. Yeah. OK, so, so Backfeed uh, is a protocol and a platform uh, to enable decentralized collaboration, to just say it really, really. Yeah, so decentralized collaboration, I would say in generality, but also more specific decentralized interactions. For example, decentralized content editing for text. Yeah. Or yeah. any sort of interaction, but more, most generally, decentralized collaboration, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, um, uh, but you're facilitating a, a, a decentralized solution. Then in the end, you're also part of a company. Uh, right. And what way, uh, so that's a, a, a center uh, uh, entity. Mm -hmm. So at what way do the, those things don't conflict with, with, with each other? Right, so they, they don't conflict with each other, but they, so one of the realization um, from Lazuz was that since the technology and the tools are not yet mature, uh, it's better to start with the old world to build the, you know, to bootstrap, to build the starting point for the new world and then, you know, to decentralize. So we started the, in Backfield, we just started a regular company. Um, and, and the idea is that we build the infrastructure for this new creature which is called decentralized collaborative organization. It is the way that collaborative teams, maybe millions of people can co interact and cooperate and self-govern themselves. And once we establish that, this is in the way, when, once we establish that, Backfit is just becoming one agent in that organization. So just like anyone else can contribute to the development of that organization, you can just think of Backfit as the founding contributor maybe a big contribution because it was for a long time, but many people, but it's at the end of the day, after some time, it will be just you know, one agent in that network. Yeah. So there is no conflict. The, the model actually is tying up the old world, new world. Basically, companies can become agents in, in decentralized networks. Yeah, 
Yeah, I think it's a good one because in the end, I think also the biggest challenge with, because I'm talking now to many decentralized uh, solutions uh, 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 over here in Tel Aviv, and the biggest challenge is, is, is to make the bridge between the, the, the current old world and right. uh, the thing we're going to. I think that, that right. would be, yeah. because in the end, yesterday, uh, I also had an interview at, at, uh, at, uh, at Scenario, and it's really clear that, okay, what you're now building is, is, is a brilliant system, uh, what it can be, is really interesting. It's, 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 it's a great thing, but the gap between that from 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 where we are and right now, and where you uh, uh, can go to, is 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 quite quite big and also quite hard to 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 yeah uh, to pass. So yeah. uh, uh, do you have the same problem or the same challenge? Yeah, I think I think it's a it's a, it's a problem for extrapolation. Well, it's not a problem. It's a challenge of extrapolation. Yeah, scenario and us are in a in a, in a close uh, relationship. We are actually. Talking about cooperation um, from the earliest days, even before Backfield. Um, yeah, and this is the same question: How do you how do you build a new economy with the old economy? Right? You cannot build a new economy on top of the new economy because no, new economy is not yet um, established. Uh, I would say widely. So the idea, yeah, the idea is to use the old economy. For example, we had a long, you know, long discussions about whether we should invest, uh, raise money from VCs, venture capitals, or not. I, I generally think that, that, that bridging is generally good. So I, I'm not, I don't believe in making revolutions and breaking the, you know, breaking the old. I think the right thing is actually to build bridges. Yeah. And if you build a better model, the people will just go to the, to the new world. Uh, so I don't think there is any need to ignore or, or break or whatever uh, the old model. So we are definitely rooted in the, in the old economy. Uh, we are a company. We're having, we have nothing against raising funds from VCs. Also, of course, we, you know, we like more raising funds from the crowds, and we will do that as well. But uh, generally speaking, we don't have any you know, um, intention to, to fight with the old economy. Yeah. yeah, but I think that's a good thing, because many new startups, they're not really about disrupting. And I think okay, disrupting is really nice for marketing <laughs> in the start. <laughs> yeah. But in the end, you have to uh, also, uh, the basic of what you do is the quality of your product. And if the only quality is that you can disrupt somebody else, then you're not adding value right. for your stakeholders. So, so disrupting is, 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 is interesting marketing strategy, <coughs> maybe for the first year, but then you have to grow up and stand on your own feet and, and, and don't hide be behind the, yeah. the, the I'm the disruptor yeah. uh, uh, mask. It's like, it's like I, knew, I knew a farmer, he was very, very much into sustainability. So he was growing his vegetables in a very sustainable way. At some point, he used plastics, and I asked him, if, like, you know, it's very unsustainable, and, and so on. He said, "Yeah, but you you need all, not only to worry about the sustainability of the of the land, you also need to worry about the sustainability of the farmer." So, yeah. eventually, at the end of the day, you need to survive, and if if you don't survive, it doesn't serve the purpose. So, so yeah. I think balance is. Uh, yeah, yeah, and and also the discussion about uh, about the sense of urgency. Uh, so right. So exactly. So, so I was talking to the guy that we share. A, a desk guy from Dutch platform, he said, okay, uh, when I'm getting investors on board, I don't want to give them preferred uh, stocks, shares, right. but hey, but when, uh, but when I have no money uh, on the bank and I have 10 employees and my organization is, okay, accept this deal right. or die, yeah, they say, okay, yeah, then, then it's yeah, so also the context uh, 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 of the situation will change the way you're dealing with this yeah. question, I guess. Yeah. So we, we see that as a part of a greater evolution, and, and I think, I think, uh, I think it makes sense to extrapolate and not try to, you know, jump and from one place to another. Yeah. Yeah. And you say okay. Gradual yeah. process. Yeah. And you say this is part of a bigger revolution. So 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 how do you see? So so can you tell me how do you see this 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 this, this revolution? I'm really interested in. So. This is the whole notion of, again, decentralization. Uh, I don't think most people are not even aware of that, but uh, I think the more we are moving towards there, the more it's obvious that that's where we are going to uh, as a world, as a society, as an economy. Um, there, is, there is the technology, there is the knowledge, there is even the starting of the culture um, that realize how big networks, how decentralized networks can, can in a way, organize themselves, self-organize and interact and in a way completely replace the corporate model to a large extent. I'm not, I'm not sure if like one, you know, completely, maybe gradually, but um, I actually believe that almost any of the, of the existing uh, industries will be replaced by a decentralized industry. Um, for example, journalism. 
there is already today like a, 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 if you want a premature, a premature version of decentralized uh, content editing and, and, and you know and journalism it's called for example Facebook it's called reddit you know every, everyone that is participating on Facebook is a writer or editor and same for reddit and, and all that but there is not it's just miss, it's just missing some parts and these parts are already here the technological part that actually allows those people on the network to, to decentralize, uh, to interact in the centralized way without having the, set, the Facebook server, this is the blockchain, and also the DHT, the distributed hash table, like BTorrent. Um, and then in terms of governance protocol, how they agree about this, you know, the state of, of matters. And again, th this is where we enter basically, and we have the knowledge. And I mean, from here to the future that I see, I mean, of course, there is, long, there is a long time of development to reach there, but there's nothing conceptual that is missing. So the way I see that is that within, you know, I don't know, I, can, I cannot say for sure if it will be taking three, five or 10 years, but that's the scale. Within this, the next decade, I actually honestly believe that all of those industries, whether it's social media or insurance or lending or banking or transportation or journalism or, or me medical industries, all of them will be replaced by gigantic self-organizing ne organizing network where the power is truly distributed. So it's not, it's not flat organization. Of course, there, are, there is hierarchy, but the hierarchy is emergent and dynamic. Yeah. Like the more basically participating, the more contributing, the more reputable you are in a network, the more your influence. Yeah. Uh, and well, if you really, really drag, you know, drag me forward, I, I actually believe that this will replace also municipalities and cities and, and at some point eventually even states. Uh, there is no reason why not. It will be, become more efficient, more resilient, more fair, more stable. Basically, it's, it, in, in, in many ways, it's really mimicking uh, biology, the way nature uh, you know, takes position. Yeah, so can you explain. Well, if you look at natural systems, like uh, whether it is uh, ecology, evolution, uh, uh, there, is a, there is a notion called stigmergy in biology. Um, like the way ants uh, self-organize uh, fish, birds, it's called stigmergy. And I mean, if you look at those uh, systems, they, 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 they have this flavor, these large systems, they have this flavor of decentralization, uh, of stigmergy, they have this flavor of diversity, uh, distribution of power in a sense. So I think uh, resilience, for example, I think definitely today, today's culture, today's industry, today's economy is, is to me, it's obvious, but I, I think it's getting obvious to more and more, ma many, more and more people. I think that today's economy is far from stability, far from resilience. Uh, it's just actually just going in the other direction. So, I don't. For me, it's obvious that uh, that that's the way. We, that's the direction we're going to. Um, it's just for me. It's just uh, just a matter of time. Like yeah. the question of how long it will take. Yeah. And I think we are much more mature today than we were just one year ago. Uh, we know much better about the technology and what needs to be completed in order to get there. So I think we are less naive. We are not thinking it will take one year. Maybe we thought before it will not take one year. But I also, I also think it won't take a decade. It will take somewhere in between. I think five years is a good uh, time scale to, to expect. And at what point do you, do, you, do you think you can create a sense of urgency for people also to join? Because uh, now, uh, because people they are not rational uh, creatures, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because they're uh, the same like uh, uh, we know we're paying with our privacy on Facebook, we know, so, so uh, we're used to, to all these services, uh, and we know, okay, we're not paying money for that, but th uh, they're getting rich, so somebody has to, <laughs> to make uh, money off our contribution on it. Yeah. Uh, but still, uh, the sense of urgency of people to, 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 to search for uh, alternatives. Uh, isn't that big, I think. So at, at what way do you think it, is it possible to also create a sense of urgency to people also to, to, to make this change? Right, so it's basically all the question of incentive, right? What is the incentive to be there? Specifically, what is the incentive to be a, an early adapter? All of those networks have the same biggest challenge, early, early adoption. Uh, if you have the critical mass of early adoption, then you're done. Well, of course, there is the technological development, but that's, the, that's definitely not the bottleneck. Um, so there are different ways to look at it and I think in a, in a way different answers or if you want different incentives and, and probably different incentives speak with different people which is fine. Um, so 
for example, one, one reason why I think people are participating is because they are visionaries. They see the future and they're actually quite excited to be part of that future. I think that that's a very strong driving um, uh, fuel, uh, driving engine to, to people, to early adopters, to much of the early adoption actually. Uh, you could see that in many previous platforms. Uh, for example, Waze here in Israel as well. As, as well, I think the early adopters of Waze, you know, just did that because it was so cool, and they could see the vision in it. Um, and the same for Bitcoin, by the way. Another another incentive is that, for example, in Bitcoin, it's designed, and, and, and that's the same true for most decentralized network. It's designed in a way that the earlier you are contributing, in a way you are more risking, and thus you will be benefited more. In the Bitcoin, I think it was too much extreme. And those who were investing very little in the beginning are now very rich and it was off balance to the other way around. But, but the, generally the, the, the notion, the, the idea is right and, and, and it has also here, like the earlier you are participating in some way or another, the more you will earn for that while it's exceed. So that's another uh, incentive for, I don't, I don't think this is the main incentive for the earlier, that, that, that was maybe for the second wave. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's, there's a lot of excitement, you know, more intellectual excitement, like in the Bitcoin, again, much of it was like the intellectual excitement, the idea of how new, new kind of ideas can uh, uh, take place. And, and of course, you know, the, the, the wish to see a better world, more cooperative, open, transparent world. Yeah. And, um, and, 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 and also to, to, uh, the possibility of, of, of being a alternative. Right. Because now, like, like with banking, uh, you can't agree uh, with your bank but they say, okay, but yeah, I, I, I don't agree with all of them. So right. I, I can switch, but there's nobody to, to, yeah. uh, to go to. That's true. So I think the industries that are in a way will face the earliest transition will be those industries where people are really, they're really tired of the system. They really have feel the urgency to find alternative. I think insurance is one example. I think people like hate insurance, basically the insurance companies all over the place, all over the world. Uh, and they feel that something is wrong there. I think banking is another example. Um, I think, well, I, I think social media is getting there as well. I think people are more and more tired about the way Facebook acts. Um, transportation, Uber is very uh, agonizing. Um, yeah, but I think... Uh, uh, journalism, I think, uh, yeah. also journalism. I think yeah. it's somewhere people really feel urge to break through. Uh, so I think those industries will... I'm just guessing will might might experience the earliest uh, transitions. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, social media will be one of the first because that's also something where people are really active on. But like insurance, uh, people may not trust insurers or maybe hate them, like like you say. But they also don't really care about insurance. So so they say, okay, uh, I yeah. will close the deal and then uh, the same. I forget like, about it. Yeah, the same like with me because every year I can switch from a health insurance. I don't know uh, it will save me money, but I think, yeah, but I, yeah, I right. know it, but in uh, some way, uh, not rational, but in some way, I don't care. The yeah. same with car insurance, same with my house insurance. Uh, I uh, closed the insurance, I think, 10 years ago. Many <laughs> things happened. I think I'm paying uh, 200 euro a, a year too much. But, yeah. but <laughs> in some way, I'm yeah, not saying so, so, so that's, 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 that's some, so there, I yeah. Agree. I, think journal, I think journalism is really burning issue. I think people really feel that journalism is not just about you know eco economical pur purpose. It's 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 people actually feel you know uh, it was said decades ago. People knew, I mean it was said you know that if you control the media, you control people's mind. Um, it's it was said that the, the 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 thing that you read in the paper is not the actual thing, but you know it's it's the, it's a thought of of very a few number of individuals. But, but these things that were said, kind of as kind of, uh, I would say, underground rumors, I think now they are just put on the table today. Everybody knows that. Like everybody knows that we are controlled by the, you know, by the owners of media. And I think people and the culture of participating in the media, whether it's Reddit or Facebook or Medium or blog posting, you know, the culture is so much developed that I think that, at the same time, the hatred for the old-fashioned, you know, the old-school media. I think that, that the journalism will is probably the best candidate for this transition. Actually, speaking of that, we are we are working. For example, we are working with a startup company that is building um, a more crowdsourced version of Medium. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's like Medium, but in a way that the revenues be go back to the to the to the writers. And now we work with them to to launch a version which is more decentralized, so that not only 
for example, in collaborative. Not only you can, you know, you can share the ownership or the, or the revenue, but also they can collaborate on the content itself. So it's not just that you are uh, submitting content and that's it, but, but different people can collaborate in a decentralized way on the content thing. Okay. Cool. So I think I think journalism is a promising direction. Yeah, well, maybe uh, because uh, I'm also going to write, a, to write a book about Carl Expedition, so maybe, maybe we can uh, yeah. use it as a, as a test case. Yeah, I really like it to be test cases because I really like to experiment. Yeah, we have a very simple protocol. Actually, we're just speaking about a very simple protocol for decentralized content editing, which we would like to exper uh, experiment with, uh, you know, in the in the near future. So okay. that can be a okay. cool. Uh, yeah. So here's one volunteer. Okay. Because I really like <laughs> to, ch uh, to change the system. And and uh, what are the other projects you are also now working on with the uh, with the uh, technique and the protocols of of uh, of uh, of, uh, of backfeed? So right now we're we're very focused on a on a on a on a protocol of, on a sorry on an application for it's in a way it's it's somewhere it, it's a new it's okay it's it's a new notion of discoverability it's the it's I would say that's the search engine 3.0 uh, but it's it's in between search engine and and social network and Stack Overflow just eventually just imagine that you have a call, j just it's not just a search engine. You have you have this thing. You have this collective mind. You can ask questions, and it gives you answers. But this collective mind, because it's actually curated by people and not by algorithms, it understands. So algorithm doesn't understand. Algorithm can analyze, but it can by definition it can only analyze objective measures. It cannot understand subjectivity, whereas people can understand subjectivity. You can ask questions. You can even ask which group of people you want to answer that question. You can ask, you know, subjective question, what is the best movie of 2015? And you, you would like maybe to cryptocurrency hackers to answer that question. Yeah. And so you can ask this collective. So we build this kind of new notion of search engine, uh, which, which I think the name search engine is, is, is not, doesn't fit for that because it's not search and it's not engine, but, but in a way collective mind engine or collective mind, collective, collective brain that you can ask question uh, and you can get answers, and and as a curator, you can you can give answers and and make a living, yeah. A living. Yeah. And uh, uh, what are now your uh, your biggest challenges for the for the let's say the the the, 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 the next year? Wow. So. And and, and so maybe many of them. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So so maybe the 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 three biggest. Yeah. I guess funding is the biggest challenge right now because we are we are not. A, even within, I mean, you see this revolution of blo this blockchain revolution is almost is soon to be mainstream. I mean, there is so much stream entering, so much, so many funds are streaming to that space. But we are not in the mainstream of that uh, revolution. We are in the forefront of research, uh, of vision, and in that case, in that sense, even those people who are into the blockchain, for example, most people don't understand what we are doing. Um, and of course, so one challenge of us is is explaining. Uh, this complicated, or if you want, complex, or, or far, far, far visions uh, into simple words where people can really easily understand them, and that's that's one reason why we built today a very particular proof of concept. Um, so that's the, I, mean, I think explanation and, and mar like uh, messaging. I think it's one big challenge. The second challenge, which is derived from the first, is is, is fundraising, uh, which we do. We have fundraised. We we'll fundraise more, but it's it's a ch it's a big challenge. Um, there is technological challenge because the, the, the technology that we speak about is not, you know, it's not fully mature. So we need, you know, it's go, it goes hand in hand with that. Um, yeah, I think organiz organizationally, I mean, we are ourselves a little bit distributed, so we face also that kind of challenge. But you know, this is regular challenge. So. And 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 uh, the, the first two, the the the, the funding and the, and and the, and the communication or story parts. So so, yeah. so 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 like when. When you're meeting an investor or a potential investor, so uh, what is the the story you tell that uh, he or she will understand what you're doing? At, at, at what way do you make it uh, really clear for them what the, the uh, what it is, but also what the uh, what the potential yeah. excitement is of where it could be? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I tell what I told you before. I mean, but there are many narratives that you can focus on. Um, but really, the idea that you can make decentralized interaction of any kind, um, and with those examples that I mentioned, it's very transformative. It, it's harder. It's like two step ahead to see how it also makes revenue for them as investors. Uh, it, it it is there, but you need in order to understand that you need to appreciate the protocol. You need to understand how it works. You know, it, 
the, the point to appreciate is that we are really speaking about a new kind of economy. It's not the same as the old economy. It's a different economy. It's an economy where a network is having its own autonomous economy, its own issuance of, to of, of, of money, so to say, or, or equity, so to say. We call that tokens. Um, it's not really money, it's not really equity, but, but that's like the analogous thing. And, and, and the point is that in order to really understand how that makes money for investors, they need to understand the new economy, how it works, how it operates. And yeah, that's like, uh, I think that's where the challenge is. It's the challenge is not explaining the vision. I think people get the vision uh, pretty fast. The, the, two, the two steps to, to, you know, to actually be convinced is to, to really firstly understand how it actually works because it sounds like miraculous. Like, what, what do you mean by saying that millions of people interact in the same way? What, what does it mean? How they do that? So yeah, there is a protocol of that. There is an answer to that, but you need to understand the, the protocol and it's not like, it's like, it's like understanding blockchain. Blockchain is not a simple protocol. It's quite complicated. Um, and the second uh, which stage which is, or step which is specifically for investors is like, okay, great, I understand, I'm convinced, but how I make money out of it? And again, there, is, there are answers, but you need to understand more uh, of the economy, of the new economy. And, and I mean, people have worked on these answers for a lot, long time, and we have, we have very good understanding of all this. And the idea is how to make all this um, you know, understandable in a short, easy way. The same problem and challenges were faced uh, were faced by the blockchain community in the early days. Like you know, five years ago, nobody realized what blockchain is. It took like I don't know four years just to understand blockchain for the masses. Not even masses, you know, even the the hackers. And and now it's kind of obvious. Yeah, you just say blockchain. If you just write blockchain in your in, in your in your white paper, basically, you just you, you might get funding because it's just you know it's, it's the hot it's the hot word. So I think the same thing happens here. We will have to educate people about the possibilities yeah. of this transition yeah. uh, in, a, you know, in a simple manner. And when, uh, and, and when you say, okay, we're really uh, upfront of, 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 of this whole development, uh, when you're looking uh, back to like say what now ha happening in, in, the, in the Bitcoin community and, and also many uh, different organizations, also big corporations uh, uh, trying to or, or investing money into it, uh, what do you think about that? Do you uh, do you think that they can really, uh, yeah, do something with it, or, or or is it just a a a hype? They heard something about it and they say, okay, let's let's go and try. Um, well, I think that the um, no, I think I think it's a trend. It's a re it's a real trend uh, for a good reason. I think there are so many obvious uses use cases. For blockchain, it doesn't need you know sophisticated protocol. Just just the blockchain is enough for. Um, basically, the blockchain is just is, is a kind of a public ledger, a public registration book initially, and then also afterwards uh, the public computer, where basically you can. So even if you take the first uh, uh, um, the first uh, uh, ge generation of blockchain, which is just a public public uh, registration book, um, already you can do so many things. Or Every possible application that requires internally uh, very well precise and resilient accountability, accountant, accountants, blockchain is just perfect for it. Why do you need? Why do you need servers for? I mean, just write everything on the blockchain. You know, nobody, nobody. The, the point in the blockchain is that everybody can write, nobody can delete. So it's completely resilient, completely secure. You don't need to hold servers. You don't need to, you know, to hide them. Uh, you can prove everything that you do. So, so you imagine so many applications that just, just for the fact of accountability, transparency, and resilience, it's, it's a huge in, in transition yeah. by the blockchain. And, and that's, just, that's, that's the old generation. We are speaking about the next generation where the blockchain is no longer just a, a public ledger, a public database, which is secure, resilient, and, and transparent, but it, and decentralized, of course, but it's also a decentralized computer. You can also run software, and, and in the same way, Anyone can write software on this universal computer, and nobody can delete or tamper the yeah. software. So that 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 enable and that, that that is basically the basics of of decentralized applications. Yeah. And decentralized applications it is the basics for decentralized collaborative organization, which is Backfeed. The big big difference is that previously decentralized applications were only used objective measures of value, things that that algorithms and machines can measure. But you know most of interactions between people are subjective. And if I'm, if I'm writing code, it's subjective. Some people will say it's a good code. Some people will say it's a bad code. And then different networks will evaluate differently. And that's where, where basically the uh, subjective 
or subjectively objective measure is coming in, and that's basically the core technology of Blackfin. Cool, it's really interesting. And 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 so, what is your 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 ultimate goal? So 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 so, so when when will uh, Blackfin be a big success for you? Uh, what a big? What, uh, when will be uh, uh, so? A success. What's your uh, uh, yeah. uh, ultimate goal? So, so when will Backfeed be a good success uh, for you? Yeah. So there, there are milestones. I would say. I think the, the the very the very first big milestone will be to make the first collaborative, decentralized collaborative, you know, organization or decentralized collaboration of of human beings scalable, resilient, and so like. I think the first decentralized collaboration of millions of people on anything will be transformative. It will be transformative, uh, well, by itself, of course, but it will be more so because the ability to, to serve as a proof of concept for human beings, for, for humanity, of what can be done. Yeah. Like how much, how much power, I think, I think we never, in the, in the whole of human history, we never had large scale, systematic, decentralized free collaboration of any of, of anything and I think the power that resides uh, in this you know promise I think the power is, is unimaginable we don't even we cannot even imagine what can be done like what millions of people can do together like what what it looks like to have a startup of million people I think it's not just a, it's not thousand times the power of startup of thousand people it's 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 something else, um, and I think, and I think that we, in order to understand even the potential, we need a proof concept. So the first big milestone is to have really a truly scalable, real decentralized uh, collaboration of people, uh, and I really hope that we can achieve that. You know, in this year, uh, I mean, the next year, 2016, in the coming year. Um, yeah, of course we have, you know, afterwards we can, you know, there are many, many dreams and, and, and ideas and we have, you know, you can basically, there are so many ideas about uh, so many industries, how we can make a better world. But for example, some of them which I really like is, for example, I believe today that the ecological movement uh, is so difficult and I think that this kind of uh, technology, this kind of uh, philosophy can actually also, also, in a way, help there. I think I think the only way we can actually save the planet is not by governments. It's actually by by having millions of people taking the power to themselves and deciding what to you know what to reward, what not to reward, which 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 things to buy, which things not to buy, and and take the power back to themselves. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the only way. Yeah, I share that same thought. Yeah. So yeah, I'm, and then we can speak about the, a whole new era of where where gigantic networks really control uh, the you know the the fate. Of, of, of humankind and not, and, not, and not some very minor uh, amount of people, uh, whether like very, whether it's very rich people or just powerful or, 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 or governors and uh, which I think nobody anymore feels that they speak on his behalf. Yeah. So I think we, as a, as a society, we completely lost faith in this light governance. Yeah. Cool. So let's uh, yeah. change <laughs> it. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Hey, good luck with everything. Uh, uh, I'll keep following you. And uh, uh, if people want to, to help or to partici uh, participate, uh, are there some, some, some things you, uh, you need right now, except us, of course the funding? Yeah, so I think first the first thing will be to enter our website, which is changing all the time. So um, it's called backfeed.cc, yeah. B-A-C-K-F-E-D, -E like feedback, but opposite. So backfeed.cc and to register there. And then we keep in touch and, and we'll start engaging with our followers and, and more so as we go along. And we will have a crowd sale, crowdfunding uh, uh, campaign in a few months. Uh, we will launch, hopefully, a working application in a few months that people can start using and, and experimenting. Uh, we'll have blog, forum and all that in, in some, some time. So being involved and, and, and then we'll start to develop an open source community of, of hackers and so on. So, I think the, 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 tunnel, the channel to all of that will be just to register on the website and then we'll take care for the rest. Cool, okay, so I will put a link that down uh, the video and uh, just register and then uh, just join uh, the Backfeeds uh, cool. expedition. And of course, right. writing email, you can, I mean, you can just write email to info at backfeed.cc yeah. for any question. Cool. Okay, thanks. Cool. Cool. Good luck. Thanks a lot.